Hi guys, for about two weeks now, I have been testing lithium ion phosphate cells from my old power wall. I have here now around 50 cells out of my uh, 96. And we have enough cells to make a very good judgment of how these cells are doing. So today is all about longevity of lithium ion phosphate cells because we can now say how long lithium ion phosphate cells really last, what their cycle life is and how they uh, just retain their capacity over time. And I just want to say one thing now and this is, you know, people are always quoting specifications and repeating manufacturer's information because they don't have other information. They don't have real life numbers, but I can tell you I have them. And they will get their head washed uh, with cold water today. I promise you. let's just begin with what we are actually talking about here. So these here are 100 amp hours lithium ion phosphate cells. The company which produced them was Sinopoly. So that company still exists, but they do not play a major role uh, today anymore. This type of cell, this was uh, more or less the generation one cell is not produced anymore. Today the cells, lithium ion phosphate cells, are typically, uh, as you know, this kind of blue prismatic blocks. They are completely closed in, other than these ones, because you can see here we have the two poles, battery poles of course, and in the middle we have a sort of vent. And this is rubber here, so actually this can actively vent uh, gases which are inside the cells. I got my first cells around five years ago. And at that time I was also chatting with Sinopoly directly because I was asking about uh, smelling electrolyte from these uh, cells and uh, they told me that those cells at that time were around three years old and they have been sold to a Chinese customer. So in their first life they have probably been inside an electric vehicle like an electric bus driving around somewhere in Shenzhen maybe. And then they have been uh, removed from their initial application, probably because they could not fulfill their specifications there and hold the capacity. At that time, some uh, Chinese company probably salvaged it and resold them all over Southeast Asia. So I got them here in Thailand and of course the seller did not tell me if they were new, if they were used, whatever, right? They are all claiming that they are good cells, almost new cells or whatever. You can see here, I have marked every cell. And here in the beginning there's a number, right? Here a one. And this means that this cell is one of the 48 cells of my first group, which I have received five years ago. I've then also got 36 cells in a second uh, purchase. So this is the number two. And some of them I have then already capacity tested. So this cell at that time had 71 amp hours. So that was around three years ago. And then I had a final purchase, which was about two years ago. So the number three. 16 cells 
and those were all tested and you can see there the test that time was at 82 amp hours. All of these cells you can see here have been degraded by around 20% when they were uh, decommissioned the first time. And that is quite normal because the specification usually uh, will tell that after 80% state of health, such kind of cells are considered wasted. Okay, you can see here my test setup. Here this is my charge station. I am uh, initially charging every cell to 3.65 volts. Then it goes into the discharge test. The discharge test is done with uh, 9 amps. And here I am then uh, charging it up after the discharge test a little bit before it goes here into the storage. Okay, let's take a look on these three groups of cells here. What is it actually about? So these three groups are actually collected here by capacity. So group one are cells which do have a remaining capacity between 25 and 40 amp hours. Here group two these are cells between 41 amp hour and uh, 55 amp hours. Group 3, 56 until then whatever is the highest cell. I have another one. This one I have defined as completely uh, broken. So now these groups actually do not have uh, anything to do with what I said before when I bought them, right? But if we now take a close look, then you will see that actually all of these cells are purchased five years ago, except this one here, right? So this is an outlayer which degraded even more than expected. It's also here. The best cells, of course, they all come from uh, two years ago. And this one here, most of these, except a few outlayers again, they are from uh, the last purchase, but they should all almost all be from three years ago. So all the cells which I got around five years ago and, uh, and are eight years old are down to between 36 amp hours until 24. These two here, which I consider as completely done, 11, 9 amp hours. If you look, into the measurements of internal resistance, then you can actually clearly see, except some outlayers, that the internal resistance will rise while the capacity will fall. So right, so here with the 24 amp hours, we are already down at four milliohms while here at 36, we are at 1.6 milliohms. If we continue this here, the second group, 41 amp hours, 1.8 milliohms. It's of course a little bit up and down, but you can clearly see that with the rising capacity, remaining capacity, the internal resistance values will be also lower. So here we had between 41 amp hours and 53 amp hours in the second group. And the latest ones, 57 amp hours, 1.4 milliohms. And you can clearly see the better ones will then have 
much lower internal resistance. So here the best one I found until now was 65 amp hours. A brand new of these cells should have a 0.4 milliohms internal resistance. So you can see once the internal resistance doubles, the state of health is already down by at least 30 to 40 percent. Yeah, so these are the hard facts. Let's talk about how I have used these cells. So initially I told you they have been in their first life, all these cells, for around three years. Right? How many cycles can a cell, battery cell, get uh, even if it's used really hard during three years? I guess around 1000, right? So one daily cycle. Then when they have stayed with me in my power wall, I made around 20 cycles per month. So the first group of cells, they will have added around 1200 cycles. The second one, maybe 1000 and the last one around 700. So all these cells will probably stand somewhere between 1700 and 2300 cycles overall. What did the manufacturer promise? So the ma manufacturer says that the cycle life of these cells were 2000 cycles or above at the de depth of discharge 80% and 3000 or above if you just discharge him by around 70 percent. Now we have to look at the definition of a cycle life and uh, I have uh, looked all this up of course. So a cycle life is typically defined after how many cycles a battery cell will degrade down to 80 percent state of health. So 2000 cycles and the remaining capacity should be around 80 percent. So we're standing here uh, with average of 2000 cycles and the average state of health of around 45 percent. This is far worse than anyone would have promised, right? What can I say to the application of the second life of these uh, cells here? means when they have been here with me. None of these cells have ever been overcharged or over discharged. Right? I have charged them typically up to 3.45 volts maximum and discharged down to around 3 volts. I live here in a tropical climate but they have been protected from sun I would say and this is also what I can say now by measurement of my other uh, power packs there. These cells could have reached ambient temperatures and internal temperatures of around 45 degrees Celsius. But this is well within any specifications of lithium ion, ion phosphate cells. The only thing what I did, but this is not written anywhere, instead of having them positioned like this, so standing terminals uh, to the top. I have mounted them like this, terminals to the front and uh, the cells standing up like this. So in my uh, one of my previous videos we have already speculated that these uh, first generation cells do have probably some kind of design issue when it comes to the behavior of the electrolyte. So it might be possible that when you put it like this that the upper part of the cell here internally will dry out more quickly that that electrode inside will maybe have dried out more quickly and this caused the rapid uh, degradation then here with me within the last five years, right? But please feel free uh, when you have a better uh, idea 
what made uh, these uh, first generation cells here degrade so quickly? Just let me know. But if you look at uh, these cells here, you will see they are not swollen uh, or anything. It's pretty normal for the age of this uh, cell here. Much, much bigger degradation than promised by the manufacturer. If you now look how many cycles are promised uh, for new cells today, like 8,000, 10,000, etc. Who will first of all believe all that? And the second question is, who will then in 20 years uh, confirm if that was uh, all true? But if you have a pack at home, also with the newer type of cells, and you do some uh, measurements there, so you have an internal resistance uh, meter, please tell us what do your measurements say? Do you also have a sort of increase of internal resistance? What does your estimated capacity say uh, of your cells, of your packs? Please let us know. This is of course a topic which the marketing departments of uh, cell manufacturers do love because nobody typically will look ahead 20 years and then uh, disprove them. So yeah, I hope uh, you found this interesting. As I said, use the comment section, let us know do you have your own experiences with this kind of cycle life and longevity of uh, lithium ion phosphate cells. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I thank you for watching and I see you next time.